Today, we are going to keep it simple. We are going to go over what is considered a good rate of return on your investment across various different investment options. This can be used kind of like a benchmark for you. If you can beat these rate of returns, then you're doing pretty good. And if a year comes in under these averages, then you know to take an extra look on how to improve the performance of your portfolio. But also remember, investing is about averages. So some years may just naturally return below these benchmarks. This is day 14 of 100 days of finance, where the entire goal is to give you more personal finance education in 100 days than most people receive in their entire lifetime. As always, my name is Derek and I got my degree in finance, so you don't have to. Let's get right into the video. So investing is a great way to grow your wealth over time. But if you don't know what a good rate of return is on those investments, how do you make improvements? So first and foremost, when it comes to investing, the most important factor to consider is the rate of inflation. If an investment generates a rate of return below the rate of inflation, the investor, you, will essentially lose money over that period of time in real terms. That's because while the dollar amount of your investment went up, the purchasing power actually went down by the percentage of inflation minus the percentage of return. So just remember, if your investments are not beating the rate of inflation, they are not making you money. With that said, investing is still a better option than doing nothing in times of high inflation, because at least then you are fighting off some of the effects of inflation, as opposed to just keeping your money in cash. So while the goal of investing is to always beat inflation, during times of high inflation, not investing is actually the worst thing that you can do. And of course, this is where things like I-bonds come into play. Now, one other thing to understand, the rate of return for different types of investments is usually based on their risk risk profile. Generally, investments that carry higher risk also carry higher reward. For example, stocks are known to offer a higher return than, say, bonds or cash investments, but they are also more volatile and carry a higher risk profile. Bond and cash investments, on the other hand, usually offer lower returns but also come with lower risk. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go down the list. Starting with the usually lowest returning asset, cash. Cash almost never by itself provides a return, but there are are some exceptions, like if the currency that you are holding rises in purchasing power against other currencies. Another notable exception is when interest rates are high. Now, in this scenario, you can't just hold cash to benefit you. You, in essence, need to loan it to someone, but that can easily be done through a high-yield savings account. Like now, in the current environment, some high-yield savings accounts are offering above 4% return. That is excellent for essentially zero risk. So for cash, 3.5% and above should be your benchmark. And if you are holding cash in a bank account, you better be getting 3.5% or above. If not, you are leaving free money on the table. Now let's talk about bonds, treasury bonds to be specific, not those bull high yield junk bonds. Long term government bonds on average over the last 100 years have returned between five and 6%. That is good considering that government bonds are essentially risk free. So for bonds, 5% minimum should be your long term benchmark. But since bond yields are set from the start, how do we even go about beating the average? Well, remember when interest rates rise, bond prices fall and vice versa. Long term, you can use the market environment and the the interest rate environment to outpace the average by buying bonds when their prices are lower, hence the yield will be higher. Okay, what about real estate? Well, this one's a little tricky because of leverage. If you buy a house in cash, your return on investment will be lower than if you use a mortgage and only put 20% down. Your return on that 20% will be much higher. But then again, of course, this carries risk because you do not own the asset outright. That's why they say more risk, more return holds true in almost anything. So a good return on cash invested, also known as cash on cash return, in real estate, I'm gonna go with above 10%. But also remember, this return is non-compounding because it is usually in the form of rental income. So unlike stocks where you make a return on your previous year's return, real estate returns usually do not. But in a sense, it still can if the property appreciates. So like I said, this one's a little bit all over the place. But if your year over year return is above 10%, I would say that you're doing pretty good. And now everyone's favorite, stocks. 
Well, that also depends because there are stocks and there are index funds. But if you are an investing connoisseur and you are handpicking stocks based on fundamental analysis, then your goal is naturally to beat the return of the S&P 500. Because if you can't beat it, you might as well join it in the form of an index tracking fund. So if you are building your own stock portfolio, then a good return would beat an index like the S&P 500. And the S&P 500 usually tends to return about 10%. So if you can beat that, then you, my friend, are on your way to being rich much faster than most. I hope this video was informative and gives you a good benchmark for your own investing. In tomorrow's video, we're going to be breaking down the basics that everyone should know about real estate investing. So make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss that video, along with all the other videos as we continue our journey of 100 days of finance. As always, my name is Derek and I got my degree in finance so you don't have to. I love this stuff. It's been my passion for over a decade and I love to be able to share that with you. I'll see you tomorrow.